Don't do this common mistake when breathing ozonated olive oil. So don't use a water bubbler when ozonating oils. So those two different contraptions cannot be used interchangeably. So I'm Paula, the crazy ozone lady from thepowerofozone.com and in this video I will address a common mistake with bubblers, with water and oil bubblers. So yes, as mentioned, you cannot use a water bubbler when you use oils. So a water and oil bubbler are built completely differently. And what happens when you use oil inside a water bubbler is that you end up creating a lot of foam and the foam will spill out of the bubbler and will clog up the tubing and you will not be able to perform what you're trying to perform, either breathing ozonated olive oil or making ozonated olive oil. So in order to use oils with ozone, you need very specific glass contraptions. So you need either an oil bubbler or a gas washing bottle with an open stem. So What's the difference? What is the difference between an oil and a water bubbler? So a water bubbler typically comes with a stone at the end of the stem. So the stone is typically made out of an ozone-resistant ceramic. Well, all ceramics are ozone-resistant. And this stone allows for the creation, for the production of tiny bubbles. And those tiny bubbles, they're supposed to help to achieve a faster and better saturation of the water with ozone. An oil bubbler, on the other hand, what it has, it doesn't have a stone at the end of the stem, but instead it has a bowl-like shape and there are several bigger holes inside this glass bowl. And those single bigger holes, they create a single bigger bubbles inside the oil when you run ozone through it. And this is what you want, because this prevents foam. So whenever you use oil, you need either an oil bubbler or a gas washing bottle with an open stem. Now, whenever you use water, as I mentioned, you can use many different contraptions, many different solutions. You can use a water bubbler, an oil bubbler, a gas washing bottle, uh, simply a silicone tubing inside the water, or you can attach a separate stone onto the silicone tubing and then uh, put the stone inside the water. So there are many different solutions with water, but with oil specifically, you need a very specific oil bubbler or a gas washing bottle with an open stem. So don't ever use a stone to ozonate oils. Another important thing is to always remember to use a trap. And this is very important when you ozonate oils. So what is a trap for? What does it do? A trap protects your ozone generator from backflowing liquids, and this is a real thing. So this is something that happens when you ozonate any type of liquid, be it water or any type of oil. They tend to flow back through the tubing and then get into the ozone machine. Now, if water gets into your ozone generator, this is not as tragic, because in many cases this can still be repaired simply by running oxygen through your ozone generator and just drying it out. But uh, when oil gets into your ozone generator, this cannot be repaired. So an ozone generator with oil inside has to be thrown away. It has to be scrapped. And this is also damage that is not covered by any warranty. So a trap costs between $20 and $100. So you can use a gas washing bottle as a trap that you can get on Amazon, I believe, between $20 or $30 maybe. Now, it may require a different sized silicone tubing, or you can simply buy a trap from Promolife, Simply 3 or Longevity. So to recap, only use oil bubblers or gas washing bottles with an open stem to ozonate oils, and always use a trap. If you would like to learn more about how to best use ozone treatments at home, then you can buy my book, The Ultimate Guide to Home Ozone Therapy you can get it through my website, see description under this video or a link maybe somewhere up here. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Take care.